Hello, I'm Dr. Gloria Horsley, and I'm her daughter, Dr. Heidi Horsley. Heidi and I want to welcome you to Open to Hope Conversations, the podcast. We believe that the greatest gift you can give yourself after a loss is hope, using this moment to connect with others who have not only survived, but thrived. So let's get started. Welcome to the Open to Hope show. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria Horsley, with my daughter and co-host. Dr. Heidi Horsley. Well, Heidi, we've got a great show on today. Got a great guest. And we're going to be talking about using personal tragedy to transform the lives of others. But before we get started, Heidi, I wanted to remind people that my new book, Open to Love, The Secrets of Senior Dating, is now on Amazon. It was written by myself and my fiance, Dr. Frank Powers. It's for those of you who have lost a partner and are again looking for love. We've got lots of really great tips and tools for you. We use our life and our experience. We met on Silver Singles app and we use our experience to tell you that there is love out there again and give you some ideas about how you might go forward after your loss. 100% of the proceeds for this book go to the Open to Hope Foundation. How do you like to introduce our guest? Sure, I'd love to. As you said, Mom, we're going to be talking about using personal tragedy to transform the lives of others. We are talking today with one of my very favorite people in this space. Stephen and I have worked together for many, many years. We first met at the Compassionate Friends. And later on, Stephen was my student at Columbia University. So we have also worked together at the Tragedy Assistance Program for Survivors of TAPS, where Stephen worked for many years. So Stephen lost his sister Stacy in a car accident when they were both teenagers. He is a licensed clinical social worker and graduated from Columbia University, as I said. His expertise encompasses diverse community settings. He is the founder of Embrace the Darkness LLC, where he offers transformative somatic breathwork practices, empowering individuals to get their mind to shut up so the body can talk. And I look forward to hearing him talk more about how we can do this. And if you want to see YouTubes that Stephen has made with Open to Hope, please Google him because you have done a lot for us and with us. So Stephen, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. It's so great to have you on, Stephen. And, and Heidi and I uh, really appreciate your coming on and talking about what you're up to right now. But let me start out the show with saying Heidi and Stephen are, are soulmates because they both had sibling loss. And um, I want to start out by saying it's an unacknowledged loss. And they've taught me a lot as a brief parent how it is to have a loss of a sibling. Thank you, Mom. Um, I'm wondering, Stephen, if you could just start by telling us a little bit about your loss. And then from there, we'll move into what's helped you in the somatic piece and what you're doing today. Sure. Um, it's been it's been a long time. Um, August of this year of 2024 will be the 22nd um, death anniversary, as I call it. Um, and so, yeah, so um, Stacy was a, uh, cheerleading instructor for the National Tailors Association. And um, during their camps, they have public camps or private camps. Um, and so we, I had been voluntold by my mom to go up with her because none of her friends were available and it was about a six hour drive. Um, and on the, the drive coming back, we had actually both fallen asleep um, and she had died in the accident, but I had survived. So a big part of what I also talk about with my journey is also um, being a part of the queer community because she was the first person I told that I like boys at 16. You were actually in the car with your sister. Yes. I would guess we just know so many people who, who talk about that trauma of that moment. The fact that you were in the car and then, that, then like you said, have a lot of fears in your own life. Still, I mean, being LGBTQ and part of the community, if all of these experiences, this adversity has been one of the reasons that you are focusing on somatic work with people. Yeah, it, it honestly comes full circle. Um, you know, again, being over 20 years, like two decades out in my grief, you know, 
uh, working in grief and loss, being a participant and volunteer with the Compassionate Friends, and you know, thinking like, you know, oh, everything's everything's good, everything's fine. Like I've I've done my part, um, but finding somatic breath work um, helped me get in touch to be able to express the grief that was still in there, that was in the body versus just it being in the mind. Going back a little bit about my experience, I think. Um, one of the things, even just in my own little research of like how we're impacted with trauma, being asleep is probably one of the things that has kept me from experiencing more like, like intense feelings of trauma, mm -hmm. because although I woke up like briefly during the car accident, the next thing after that, I remember waking up in the hospital with um, warm blankets on, like a nurse put a warm blanket on me. Um, he saw that I was waking up. So he's like, you know, you're in the hospital, you're okay, you're safe, your mom's here out, out in front. Um, and like the big thing for me is then I I, I knew that she Stacy had died, but I, you know, I, I was thinking it because I was like, where is Stacy? What's happened? But then it was like I felt, you know, something bad because I'm in the hospital. I was found walking. Um oh, wow. someone pulled over because they saw the car accident. Um, I talked with them, but I, you know, I don't remember that. Um, and then I probably, you know, you know, did fall back asleep or, you know, was in like a blackout stage or whatever you want to call it. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. So you've never, um, never had any work around that as far as dreams or trauma work or anything. You haven't needed to do that. No. That's well, it it is interesting. It sounds like your body was protecting you, maybe, yeah. you know, um, it, it's interesting because you're saying something that I find is so true with so many people that have had trauma. We get caught in the trauma narrative. Uh, mm -hmm. And and one of the things that I'm hearing is when you came to in the hospital, the nurse reassured you that you were safe and you were okay and you were in a good place. And I think that when we go back into these stories in our heads, these traumatic stories, we need to remind ourselves that we are safe. And I'm sure you do this with your work. We are safe. We are okay. We are not back in that place. Well, Stephen, I'm seeing some parallels too in both of your, both of the things that you've dealt with. And that is like once when we've had a death, we see the world is no longer a safe and predictable place. And like mm -hmm. you said, not only did you have that with Stacey, but now coming out as a queer person, looking at the world and saying, I don't think I live in a safe, predictable place. So for everybody out there listening that have had these experiences in one way or another, that feels like, hey, I don't live in a safe and predictable place. I've had a death, it could happen again. I don't know that it won't, or I could be victimized in some way, et cetera. Mm -hmm. How, what do we do? I think the main difference is it's, it's an internal process, right? And so in therapy, you're talking with someone, they're reflecting back, validating, like it's a conversation that you're having. And, you know, that's extremely helpful, right? It doesn't work for everyone, but it doesn't mean that it's not like, don't do it. Like, it's kind of like the rule of getting support. Like, you know, try, you know, try the group three times. And if you don't like it, try something else. Mm -hmm. But it's more about um, whatever, finding what works for you, but also being open to trying something new. And I think one of the things about, you know, in, in therapy or talking is what I've been saying is sometimes we can still lie to ourselves or like we, we tell the therapist what they want to hear, what we mm -hmm. think they want to hear. Or you withhold what you don't want to tell them. <laughs> or I don't know what they're going to, I don't know how, they're gonna, maybe they're going to judge me. But with somatic breath work or like breath work practices, it's an internal process. Like, you know, you you can't lie to yourself. Like whatever's going to come up is going to come up. And you can, you're always in control. So you can say, okay, I don't want it. Like I'm going to slow my breath down. So it's like, I can control how I feel when these things come up. Um, or I can go, a little bit deeper and try to see like, you know, where do I feel this in my body? And, you know, it can kind of help um, connect like your mind and body connection. So like if you're, you know, tense in your shoulders or in your back and like you're doing breathwork sessions or breathwork practices, we can kind of help connect like, oh, like it could be to my grief or it could be to another trauma or a car accident or, or all those kind of things and helps you to connect the dots a little bit. So, so what will you do, Stephen? I okay. generally just do 
literally breath work. Oh, and so I don't set an intention. Um, I, I ask them if they if they have an intention that they would like to kind of focus on. Um, and then I kind of just go over an, an intro of, of what it looks like. We do an intro so that they under like the mind hears, you know what I'm saying. But then during the breathwork session, it's the same thing. It's like you, now you can forget everything I told you because I'm still going to guide you and do verbal cues. And then we're just going to see what comes up. So instead of having a focus on like, this is what we're going to work on, it's more, again, what is going to come up from your body by, you know, shutting up the mind so the body can talk. And will they talk about things or will they show you through crying or yelling or it's through that, so right? A lot of it is through the expressions. And, and, and again, in the intro, it's like, oh, you might have, you know, you might want to move. You're allowed to move because some people will be like, I don't know what to do or like I want like they feel something and it's like you can move your legs you can move your arms you can like you said like some people scream some people just go a, like they sigh or anything or tears or you know as a practitioner it's helpful because if you're doing breath work by yourself you can feel it but you might not have an awareness of like if your eyes are closed and you're like kind of squinting or you're starting to cry as a practitioner, I could say, it looks like you have some tension in your eyes. Like, what is that? And then it might open that up a little bit more for them to go a little bit deeper. Well, I, I love this because my, my mother knows this, but Dr. Andrew Weil, who was pretty much at the forefront of holistic healing over 40 years ago and is still very involved, said, if we could change one thing in our lives, just one thing, it would be to learn how to breathe and do breath work. And that is exactly what you're doing. And the more that I've learned about trauma and loss, the more that I've and the more that I've read about the research, the more that I realize how important body work is in helping people to heal. Mm -hmm. So do you want to give us an example? I think one of the things too is sometimes it's always not about doing a breathwork session. Sometimes it's just about, you know, connecting to your breath and seeing where it takes you. Cause again, like um Oftentimes we're in our heads, we can do a quick little, just kind of like a somatic awareness of where we are in our bodies. Um, so if you, you know, feel comfortable and would like to close your eyes, you could do that. And now just pay attention to your breath. And just like doing a body scan, head to toe, just see if there's anything coming up any stress, any tension. If there's nothing there, just feel the support of the chair underneath you. As you exhale, think about sinking into the chair. And now let's do three deep breaths. You're going to breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth. In through the nose out through the mouth, in through the nose, out through the mouth. And now as you did that, did you notice any tension in your shoulders? Are they up to your, to your ears? If you exhale, can you feel them drop? So you're going to do deep breaths in and out of the mouth. Doesn't have to be fast. Just find your own rhythm. Connect the breaths. No pauses.
Fill your stomach like a balloon. Deep breaths into the diaphragm and out to the sides. And now let's do two more deep breaths. Breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth. Let's do one more deep inhale through the nose and hold at the top. And this is the time again to connect with your body. Did you notice any movement? Again, any tension, any stress? And as you let that breath go, let's do 10 deep breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth elongating each exhale. Breathing into the nose helps to filter as a normal function. And as we exhale slowly, this helps calm our nervous system down. And then whenever you're ready to rejoin us, feel free to open your eyes and tell me what that was like for you. <laughs> Very relaxing. So now what happens yeah. to your client after you do that? Just like we say in therapy, it's, it's different for everyone. Um, so the process is more of like, you know, are there, were there things that came up that you want to talk about the, and they don't have to, um, do they want to journal? Journal is always a great option for them to, you know, again, allow things to come up in their head and then write it out to get it out. And what is your website? It is embrace the darkness.org i felt very calm i definitely felt very relaxed um i am just wondering steven if you had advice for someone that's struggling right now after a loss what would you tell them what has helped me was you know in part you know the compassionate friends just finding other people who um you know experience have experienced a loss or a death um, and being able to connect. Did you use somatic breath work maybe just with yourself to help you through the death of Stacy? Did you find yourself doing body work and breath work? Um, no, because um, I think I think one of my things too um, was I was in sports, so I, mm -hmm. I was active. Yeah. And I always felt like, at the end of a really tough, you know, practice or, or workout that I felt good, you know, because it's, you know, kind of breaking the body down to like release stress. And I think, you know, if we think about everything, even trauma, it's all like, like stress in our bodies and our bodies store it. And so when we exercise or go for a walk or we're out in nature, we are expressing that stress. All right. I love it. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, uh, thank you so much for being on the show today. And I know Embrace the Darkness, LLC, is going to be important for you if you like the breath work, if you like what you're hearing about um, taking care of sibling loss uh, or any other type of loss can be really helpful. So thank you so much for being on the show. It's so good to see you. Thank you, Stephen. And I would definitely um, advise people if they need this kind of work to do it because Stephen is a very skilled therapist and you connect very quickly and very easily with people i've watched you firsthand for nearly 20 years and stephen has worked with all types of people all types of ages you're phenomenal and your your empathy is amazing and i'm so glad we had you on today it was a, a pleasure and an honor being here thanks for having me and Heidi and I want to thank everybody for watching this show today. And we always want to remind you that if you've lost hope, please lean on ours until you find your own. And God bless. I'm Dr. Heidi Horsley. You have been listening to Open to Hope, the podcast. You can follow Open to Hope on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. To learn more, visit us at opentohope.com and go to Apple Podcasts to subscribe. I'm Dr. Gloria Horsley. Join us again next week for another Open to Hope conversation, where we invite you to lean on our hope until you find your own.